For those who don't know me, I'm Martin Sharrick. I'm head of networks for Chorus, and once or twice a year, our comms team drag me out of the lab kicking and screaming and put me on a stage like this and take a bit of a risk because they're never quite sure what I'm going to say. Um, I thought I'd start off by just talking about collaboration. Um, it's interesting you look at the media, and if you came to New Zealand from overseas, as I did about 11 years ago, you would think that the likes of Chorus and Vocus and Vodafone and Spark absolutely hated each other, didn't talk to each other, and didn't collaborate. That's absolute rubbish. It's probably 1% of what we do. The other 99% of the time, we collaborate very, very strongly. And I think what Jeff's just been talking about with Rugby World Cup is a really prime example of that collaboration, and I'll elaborate a, a little bit for everyone. Um, what we've created in New Zealand, obviously with UFB, what's coming up with ICG, we've got great mobile networks in New Zealand. We've got a fantastic platform for delivering um, a service like Rugby World Cup. In April 2018, when Spark announced it, it was a real earthquake for the people in the networks and in the labs and looking at the analytics and the insights. Because why is it such an earthquake? Um, the first thing is it means that what TV is currently on satellite is moving to broadband. Right now, most people watch rugby, they watch their sport, they watch it on Sky. It's not on the broadband network. So the first thing is you're moving all that content onto broadband. Probably the biggest thing that we were concerned about is that all of that movement was happening at peak time. So the peak time of day between about 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. when you guys all watch Netflix, you all watch sports, you're all at home, most of the Rugby World Cup games are going to be during that period. And it means that New Zealand will have a surge of content all happening at the same time. What does it mean for us in the lab? It meant to bring forward of about two years of capacity. So again, go back April 2018 through to Rugby World Cup in September. We had just over a year to build approximately three years of network capacity. You know, a massive undertaking for the whole industry. And we're just about there, which is the um, which is the good news. So first thing we did, forecasting, insight, knowledge, how much data is going to turn up, where is it going to turn up on the mobile networks, on the fixed networks, on the fiber networks, on the rural networks, on the copper networks, everywhere. Second thing, once we had the forecast, where are we going to build and how much are we going to build? And we've spent the last two years vigorously working with our vendors to get equipment in the country, um, working with power vendors like Andrew's company to get power into exchanges, building new fiber, building new equipment to get ready for that enormous surge that's going to happen in the busy hour for Rugby World Cup. And the final thing we've done is operational preparedness. It's really interesting that TV has become an event. TV is no longer something you do at home that the telco companies don't think about. We think all the time about what are you watching on TV. Game of Thrones is coming. Rugby World Cup is coming. There's a download for the kids of the latest cloud gaming platform. We're constantly thinking about what is happening in the marketplace when we're managing networks. And when the Rugby World Cup happens, we're gonna brown out the whole network during the period. We'll black out the network and do no changes whatsoever during the Rugby World Cup games. And that will be probably the most important two hours of the year as it relates to networks in New Zealand. So huge, huge collaboration together. Just secondly, just thinking about ubiquity. I mean, apps like Rugby World Cup need a ubiquitous platform to succeed. You can't have a platform that varies. Um, Graham brought some slides up earlier on and he talked about the headline speed, but I sort of noticed that he talked about jitter and latency on those slides as well. You need high speed, you need low jitter, and you need low latency. You need great networks to succeed. And fiber is the gold standard. And obviously we're working really closely with the mobile networks and with the WISPs to make sure they can get as near to fiber as they possibly can. They won't get there, but they'll get near and we'll help them get as close as they possibly can. Um, Fiber is not just about FTTH, obviously. You know, we take fiber to the cabinet, we take fiber to the base station, we take fiber to, you know, lots of the wisps here. Interestingly, um, some of the busiest lines on chorus, I mean, just interestingly, and someone talked earlier on, I think it was Graham, about 330 gigabytes usage on average per month. The busiest lines on chorus networks is just normal lines are over 50,000 
terabytes per month. You know, this is how much data we're pushing through the Chorus network on a line level, and some of this is supporting the guys here to my right. So basically, the closer you are to fiber, the more ubiquitous your connection you will be, and the more ubiquitous your experience will be. Just finally for me, um, the other thing we're going to have to do before Rugby World Cup is make sure we get the home and the business ready for the experience. Um, just an interesting fact, when the UFB network is incomplete, you know, when Graham's UFB is complete and we've got 86% coverage in New Zealand, we'll have wider coverage of fiber than we will have DTT. So the terrestrial TV service, Freeview, will have a lower coverage than fiber in New Zealand when that build is finished. So basically fiber is becoming the TV network of New Zealand. Um, 4K is coming. It's interesting that people talk about 4K TVs. It's pretty much all you can buy down at the electronics store these days. And um, even content's coming as well. So obviously YouTube, Netflix, and also Vodafone TV as well. And interestingly, I was talking to Jeff and we talked 18 months ago, well not 18 months ago, 14 months ago, and we talked about 4K TV on Spark Sports and we thought, that's a bit of a risk, how much data will that be? But I'd sort of say to Jeff now, nah, I think we could have done it, you know? I think we could have delivered Spark Sport in, in 4K TV over New Zealand's um, fiber networks. Um, so I'll just echo some of Jeff's words as well. I really think that the Rugby World Cup and streaming has really helped educate New Zealand on how to get content onto the big stream. You know, how do you work the smart apps on your TV? How do you cast from an iPhone or from an Android device to a TV? It's really helped people get ready, not just for Rugby World Cup, but for using other applications as well. So I'll just conclude um, just a couple of facts to try and um, conclude with. So 60% of Chorus's network today can be fiber. So you can get um, fiber connection on Chorus. 60% of people on a network can. And we've just passed 50% of the network is actually connected to fiber today. So a massive acceleration of people who can watch Rugby World Cup and TV on the best available networks. So just to conclude, finally, um, what has Rugby World Cup done? Huge amount of collaboration with the industry. I absolutely agree with Jeff. It's been fantastic for us to accelerate capacity, make the best networks we possibly can, but also cement collaboration around the industry. It's produced a more ubiquitous network, and it really is readying people, not only for Rugby World Cup, but for the digital future we'll see in New Zealand. And that's me.